Previously, on trying to figure out what's happening with the universe, we discovered that apparently Hubble constant may not be constant after all. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about another cosmological blunder. An unusual new discovery coming from another paper that suggests that maybe the universe is actually also shaped differently from what we always believed. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So you may have seen the video um, that I made previously where I talked about how some of the new observations and new calculations suggested that the universe, despite expanding, might not be expanding with the same constant velocity that we always thought. The so-called Hubble constant might not be a constant. But there was also another paper that was released around the same time that also suggested something just as controversial. And it actually relates to something uh, that we refer to as the shape of the universe. So, okay, this is going to be kind of difficult to imagine. For us to imagine this, we have to actually imagine the three dimensions as a kind of a flat space, as two dimensions, because otherwise, I tried, it just doesn't work. So anyway, the current calculations and current understanding of the universe is that it's basically flat. In other words, if I were to take two parallel lines, or if I were to just take two really fast-moving rockets and were to send them on a straight line, parallel to each other, moving across the universe, both of these rockets or spaceships would uh, still travel parallel to each other even after millions and billions of years. In other words, they would never cross. That's the assumption and that's the uh, assumption based on very thorough calculations using some of the best data from the observations of the so-called CMB or Cosmic Microwave Background. This is the first light in the universe and probably some of the most accurate data we can actually get. And when it comes to the actual shapes of things in the universe, or basically the fabric of space itself, we usually denote it with this letter right here, omega. Now, omega is believed to be 1. If it's smaller than 1 though, the space could be negative in its curvature. In other words, if those two spacecraft are still traveling across the universe, they will eventually start to slowly fly apart from each other. So the negative curvature would suggest that these two spaceships will eventually move away from each other even though they're technically flying in a straight line. And then if this omega is um, larger than 1, you get what's known as the positive curvature. This one is a little bit easier to imagine because here it's the opposite. These two spaceships will eventually um, basically collide with each other. They will move closer and closer to one another even though technically they're moving in parallel lines. A while ago NASA made this beautiful image that you see right here that explains all of this in a little bit more detail with two flies. So here is what all of this looks like, and up until now we've always believed that this is what we're seeing simply based on the observations and the calculations. But there's a slight side note. With every one of those calculations and observations, there was always a certain error. But it's not really an error in observation or just being unable to see something very clearly. It's simply an error that exists there as part of the calculation in how certain we are with our results. So because of this error, we kind of made an assumption that the universe was flat. And in the most recent observations of the CMB, with the 2018 results that were being released by the ESA from its beautiful Planck telescope that you see right here, whose mission is to literally study cosmos and understand the universe, we finally got to analyze some of the most accurate data to date. And in that data, there was actually a very strange anomaly, and this anomaly was explained as the so-called A-lands. And it's not entirely clear what it's caused by, but what it suggested was that inside the observations of the CMB, the actual light was curved a little bit more than it should be. Not a lot, not a dramatic value, but just a little bit. And that value was enough for the scientists behind this paper to propose that, well, maybe what we're seeing is an actual thing. Maybe that curvature that we're observing is from the universe itself and not from the mistakes of the telescope. And just like I mentioned before, simply because we've always had a bit of an uncertainty with how flat the universe is, this doesn't really contradict previous results. It simply presents an idea that some of the observations may be explained a little bit better if we were to consider universe not to be flat, but to be a little bit more positively shaped. In other words, having positive curvature or being basically like a spherical, ultra-large, ultra-massive bowl. 
Now, I need to clarify something. It doesn't mean that if we look in one direction and basically if we go into that one direction, we then are going to literally come back from the opposite direction that we're seeing. Simply because the actual curvature implied here and also because of the actual size of the universe itself, if the universe is spherical, it's still tremendously large in size. It's much larger than we can see. The so-called visible universe, or all of the things that we actually can see simply because of the limits of the speed of light, and likely for us in Space Engine we can even reach this so-called visible limit of the universe, because by going really really fast in a single direction here, you'll eventually reach the end of the visible universe. So here is kind of what it looks like in Space Engine. Basically we have some galaxies there and here we have empty space. Now not to get you confused, this is not what it looks like in real life. If you were to actually travel to this location, you would not be able to tell a difference because essentially the visible universe is formed by the location. You still get to see just as much from every location in the universe. But anyway, so at this um, location right now, at this visible end of the universe, if I were to look back onto the Milky Way, which should be somewhere right there, really, really, really far away right there. Um, the actual curvature between my current location and the Milky Way would not be an actual sphere. It would possibly be a little bit more curved, but not a sphere at all which is simply because of the actual size of the universe. The universe is much, much, much bigger than what we can actually see. We've been able to very thoroughly establish this um, by looking at various things in the universe, and we found that there's definitely a lot more space that we just can't see anymore. And that's of course related to the fact that the universe is expanding, and a lot of galaxies are slowly disappearing, and we just can't see them, simply because of the speed of light limit and because the light just doesn't reach us anymore. But anyway, let's go back to the Milky Way. So, okay, does this actually mean anything to us? Well, if this curvature is real, if the universe is technically spherical, not only does it mean that by traveling in a single direction, you'll eventually look back and come back to the same place, it also means that if we can calculate this curvature, which is currently sort of beyond our capabilities, we'll be able to use that angle to maybe calculate the true size of the universe. Now, it's probably not going to happen anytime soon, We'll definitely need a lot more new telescopes and new technology to try to figure out what the actual curvature is if it's there. But being able to finally understand how big the universe is and what its shape is, is in some sense existentially really important to us. We generally don't like to think of things as infinite or as being incomprehensible. And right now the universe is somewhat incomprehensible to us. So if one day we were able to use this curvature to discover what's beyond the visible universe, that's definitely going to mean that we've just reached a new level of understanding of everything out there. But once again, none of this is currently certain. Because of the actual sheer size of things we're looking at, it's still quite possible that there is an error at least somewhere in there. For this particular study, their confidence level that they're actually correct is about 99.8%. It's known as a sigma 3.5 value. If you've ever taken statistics, you might remember these sigma values, um, and these are really important in science in general, but for this particular discovery, that's their sigma level. It's somewhere right here, so they could be about 0.1% incorrect, which might not sound like a lot, but for scientists, it is a huge deal. For typical physical discoveries, especially of course anything that we want to take for granted, the sigma level has to be 5 or more, and that's when you know it's basically almost absolutely certain. Those are the levels that physicists always agree with. But because of the smaller value here, it will take a lot longer before we can actually say for sure what the shape and of course the structure of the universe is. Nevertheless though, it's a pretty exciting discovery, it's a very interesting study, and it will possibly redefine our understanding of the universe, but also maybe create a lot of problems and a lot of arguments. And because I'm sort of the objective observer and don't really get involved in the actual arguments, it's going to be fun for me to report on this as we progress through the understanding of the universe. Anyway, on that note, if you would like to learn more, the study is in the description below. Also, you might have noticed I've been wearing the same shirt for a while, and that's because I've been blatantly self-promoting this. It's essentially the first ever wonderful person design that um, I personally really enjoy. Um, as I mentioned previously, I have one of these posters on the door of my workspace, and I've also been wearing this beautiful shirt that you see in the picture um, for, okay, maybe too long, I think I should wash it. 
Anyway, if you'd like to purchase your own and be the wonderful person that you are, the link for this is in the description below. On that note, once we learn more about all of this, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. And well, that's it. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe even consider supporting this channel Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.